Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Cold Hard Truth NFL podcast. I'm Anish Gupta. I'm Shrikar Rajendran. And I'm Jack Smith. Welcome back. It welcome is Jack back. Smith. Joe Mickey, Jaron Man, Jack Smith is back. All the names. Use them all up. Of course. <laughs> he is the OG. We missed you, bro. Really, really missed you. But he is back here. And this time, he's not talking about the Double Play podcast. He's talking some football with us uh, because it's been long awaited. Uh, and we're finally doing it. It's a mock draft with all three of us. Uh, we did this last year. We had a lot, a lot of fun, a lot of fun with it. I think and, this, uh, I mean, this was one of our best podcast episodes last year. And it's oh, like, yeah. you don't really see mock drafts in a podcast and it really worked. So I'm like, I'm excited to do this one. Oh yeah. I mean, can you believe it's already, like, it's already been a year since that? Yeah. And the Jets I was, are still picking this high. Like, <laughs> well, they're picking this high twice because of the Seahawks. So I'll yeah. take it. <laughs> Shout out to Jamal. Well, yeah, so I guess I'll kind of explain a little bit about how this will go. It's going to be a full first round mock draft. Uh, each of us, are we're going to go by thirds, right? So I believe Jack will have the first pick. I will have the second pick. Shrikar will have the third pick, and then we'll go in a cycle uh, like that. And I think the final two picks we do as a group, right? Because yep. uh, sure. yeah, so we'll do those two as a group. There will be no trades in this. We're going to do it uh, as the team is currently slotted. Um, and yeah, unfortunately my team is not going to be in this, which it's okay. It's fine. Uh, not real mind. Shriek ours. yeah, exactly. So Jack's really the only one who's got some big Two stakes times. in this one, <laughs> uh, which is why we let him go with picks four and 10. So that way he can, uh, draft for his New York jets. Uh, but you guys want to get started? Let's, let's get into this. I mean, I'm, I'm excited. So okay. Yeah. But right. hey, let me, let me, let me do you guys a solid. If you guys are watching on YouTube, hit the like button, subscribe, leave a comment. Uh, and if you're on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, leave a five-star review. Yeah. Let's start it off at, at pick one. Since we haven't talked in a while, we haven't really talked much about draft content. I think Aiden Hutchinson is the undisputed best player in this class. I think even though we're hearing some smoke about maybe them, them taking an offensive lineman, maybe they go Trayvon Walker. I think it's Aiden Hutchinson at one. It should be the pick. I think most likely by the time draft day comes, we're going to have another undisputed number one overall pick. I think it's Aiden Hutchinson, and I think that's who they should go with as well. Yeah, I like the pick. Um, obviously, I think he's got the highest floor out of any edge rusher too. My only problem is his arm length. When he's going to be uh, rushing the passer, he will have a little bit of a disadvantage going hand-to-hand -hand with uh, some of the bigger offensive linemen in football. But uh, technicality-wise, combine-wise, from his play last year, no doubt he is the consensus number one. I think, I think yeah, he has short arms. But A, his three-cone being so high, he's that – completely i think outweighs his short arms and the power in his hands means that even if his arms are a little short his i think that his hand power makes up for it so i'm not too concerned all right uh so yeah i just drafted him there uh so now i'm at pick two with the lions now i'm torn i'm torn between two and i know this is a live draft uh do i go chalk and go with trayvon walker i do uh, go a little bit edgy and go malik willis because they are scheduled to meet with the two qbs uh i think they did it today uh and i'm gonna go i'm gonna stay with trayvon walker uh at two go a little bit of chalk here which is surprising considering he's been rising up draft boards recently uh mainly just because of his measurables jack and i were talking about it earlier uh he's a high high upside player i think he only had six sacks uh last season with georgia also playing alongside Devontae Wyatt, uh, Nicobe Dean, Jordan Davis, to name a few. Uh, but that defense was really stout, and I think Trayvon Walker just has all-world upside. And uh, in Dan Campbell's defense, I think they're finally going to be able to have, you know, two guys that are really, you know, foundational pieces on either side of the line in Panay Sewell and Trayvon Walker. And I think that's what the Lions need to establish. You need to establish winning at the line of scrimmage. That is something they've struggled with for the last, like, two decades. I mean, like, this is honestly their entire 10 years of franchise. They, they've never been able, you know, we've never said, oh, Look at the Lions defensive line. Look at the Lions pass rush since I've been watching football. So it all starts there. And, you know, this is really the first time we're seeing the Lions at this type of spot uh, making this type of selection. So I like this pick. Uh, obviously, you could think about quarterback, but this is something they need to do. I think, yeah, I can't say I disagree with that. I think the Lions are just going to snatch up whichever edge rusher that the Jaguars pass on. But a number three. Houston Texans, there are so many different ways that this pick could go. But I think due to the cloud surrounding Laramie Tunzel and his future in Houston, I think protecting Davis Mills should be the move. Give the guy a fair or somewhat fair shot in 2022. 
now it's between Neil and Iquanu. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go with the Kem Iquanu here. Um, Tunzel, Icky, Titus Howard on the, on the same offensive line. I think that's really solid for them. Um, I really like the upside with the Kem Iquanu and, I think he's the guy that the Texans are higher on at this point. I know Evan Neal might be a little bit more polished, but I mean, I, I really like Iquano and I think he's going to be the selection here for Houston. And I think if it does work out with Laramie Tunsil, Iquano is the perfect pick because he could be an elite all pro level guard. Like exactly. he's got that guard tackle versatility. I could even hear an argument that he should start as a guard. And I think that that would make a lot of sense. So I, I like that pick. And then you hope it works out with Tunsil and, and you keep Titus Howard at right tackle and you move Aquanu to left or right guard. And I think that's kind of would make the most sense. You guys are a fan of Howard at right tackle. I'm like, see that, that was my thing with it. Like I, when it comes, it if work. it comes to like using Aquanu as a guard and keeping Titus as, as a right tackle or putting Aquanu at tackle and not having as much of an answer at guard. I don't know. Well, I was saying, Evan, ne- I mean, I think Evan Neal at right tackle would be, like I'm saying, I think, I think that you're, like, you're safe. You're like you're set there. You're right. I think you know Aquanu has that all pro level as a guard. My only problem is then you know you have another tackle spot that is iffy. I would love to have both tackles secured. That's why I was a little bit surprised. Well, pick, well, I guess we're saying at that point, if you security. think it's if you think it's if you think tackles an iffy spot, then just put Aquanu there. That exactly. is true. Yeah. He's, he's hey, as you can see, our way. chemistry is a little bit <laughs> mixed up. We yeah. forgot we have three people. It's it's, it's been weird. a while. Um, but uh, yeah, Jack and I were uh, literally like, okay, yeah, Shrikar's probably going to go tackle. So I'll let you, we already kind of know where you're going, but why don't you tell the fans what you're going to do? Yeah. So at four, the Jets, my, I've said this about a bunch of times to them. Kayvon Thibodeau is the pick at four. I think he is the, the dream scenario for the Jets. I don't, I don't buy the train that he's going to fall out of the top 10 or maybe even further. I think we're starting to see that peeled back a little bit where a couple of weeks ago he was going late in like the 15s area but now I, I think we're starting to see that peel back he's going more in the first or in the first 10 picks and a lot of the the big media names are still putting him in that top five at three or four or five and sometimes even two I think Austin Gale from PFF had him going at two I still think he was the undisputed number one in this class for a long time Aiden Hutchinson overtook him I don't see like pace of play issues or effort issues I, I don't buy it um, and the Jets were meeting with him either yesterday or today, and I think that there's mutual interest there. I, I feel like he's going to be the pick at four, assuming he's available, and in this case, he was. Yeah, I agree. Um, I was talking about it, actually, with a couple scouts today in the, uh, in the office, and they asked me, they said, where do you think he's going to go? And I said, if he goes out of the top ten, First of all, you shouldn't even mention that. Like that, that's just that's laughable to me. I don't think that's even a possibility. Uh, even out of the top five is really for me. It's hard to see what the teams you know lined up. Um, but I think you know, as obviously Jack and I are both Pac-12 guys now. <laughs> um, just seeing how he is, he's a very fluid rusher. I mean, I think it's like he's one of the cleanest pass rushers I think I've seen in a while. And I I, I don't see the lack of effort plays. My only thing with it is just he maybe doesn't jump off the screen as much as maybe Aiden did last year. But he's a tremendous prospect, and he's been the number one guy for the last, what, three years since. I mean, everyone's kind of known. Kayvon is the guy heading into 2022, so uh, I would love this pick for the Jets. And I guess it's my turn now at five. I totally forgot about that. Um, So I'm torn, again, between two guys that I have left on this board. I'm torn between Sauce Gardner and Evan Neal. Uh, but I think I'm le- this one is a little bit of an easier decision. Uh, I'm going to go Evan Neal for the Giants. Uh, similar thing to the Lions. The Giants have just struggled with offensive line play for so long. And it's like, I mean, they gave all that money to Nate Solder. What did he turn out to be? Terrible, right? We all remember Eric Flowers. It's like they've struggled to really find it. And I think Evan Neal has been the bona fide number one offensive lineman for a while. I mean, I guess I know we picked uh, Iquano first, but Evan Neal, I think, is the best tackle in this draft, uh, obviously coming from the Alabama Crimson Tide. I think he's going to be a great fit for New York. He's going to be a great fit for Brian Dable. And... Whoever's the quarterback going forward, obviously you guys know I want it to be Daniel Jones. Um, So I think this will at least help him going into next year. I I like the pick. I think Andrew Thomas and Evan Neal is a great tackle pairing. Um, I feel like it's not a no-brainer, but I definitely think that the Giants should be running the card up if Evan Evan Neal is still on the board. Or Ikemic Wano, whichever tackle is available. You got to protect Daniel Jones, make sure you you can open the running lanes for Saquon Barkley as well. So I like the pick. Carolina is very interesting. 
Do we see because a QB? Do we this see current QB? regime for the Panthers has pretty much put themselves in a spot where they most likely will have to draft a quarterback. Back-to-back five-win seasons for Matt Rule. I mean, you know, the clock is ticking on how much time he has left. So I think it's essential that they find a quarterback. Unfortunately for them, I mean, this isn't a great draft to need one. I mean, there's a lot of solid options that could turn into franchise quarterbacks. I won't deny that, but there aren't any, you know, elite level quarterback prospects like last year's class had with Trevor Lawrence, Zach Wilson, Justin Fields, Trey Lance. There's a lot to like about Mr. Malik Willis. He's a very good arm. He can make basically any throw in the football field. He can add that extra dimension as a runner. He's fast, has good vision. He's elusive. And really the concern with him is that his competition level isn't very high, but we've seen quarterbacks from smaller schools go very high in the draft, you know, Carson Wentz, Trey Lance, Josh Allen. So that shouldn't really stop NFL teams from drafting him. So I think at six, Matt Rule is going to buy himself some time here and he's going to go with Malik Willis. Okay. I agree. And I think for both of those picks uh, to speak on him, Evan Neal, I think is a perfect pick for the Giants at five, because if you're choosing between him and Sauce, most likely the Panthers aren't going to take Sauce, and they're exactly. more they likely to take. Quarters. I mean, if, if the if the Panthers aren't taking a quarterback, I think it's almost guaranteed they take one of the top three tackles because that was. I mean, you don't want Cam Irving starting a tackle again for your team. They they were one of the reasons they were so bad last year. They had one of the worst offensive lines in the league. So if you're not going with a quarterback, I think you go O line. If I was picking, um, I don't know. I. I I like Malik Willis. I think there's a chance he even goes at two because the, the, the quarterbacks that we've seen be successful are the ones who aren't perfect, but have those traits that can be developed. It's just about the situation when you get them there. Yes. Some have failed um, like Josh Rosen, Sam, Sam Darnold. Uh, you can keep going down the list. But... Can we just pause there for a minute? How he casually just said Sam. Darnold. I mean, like just looking back, <laughs> man, I mean, <laughs> it's like, at least, at least I, I can admit now that it's been four years. Like, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm reminiscing all episode today, but he's not the, uh, he's not the reason I don't want them to take a quarterback or he's not, he's not the reason I wouldn't go with quarterback at six. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, I think Willis fits the bill of that guy that if he's in the right situation, will develop into one of the better quarterbacks in the league. It is that Carolina. Yep. Don't quite know. We've seen them not make it work with quarterbacks in the past. Um, but I, I like the pick. I think with, with, with the way the board played out, if it's Willis or Cross or the two guys you're deciding between, yeah. I think they made the right pick. For the Giants at seven, I've seen a lot of people saying they double up on offensive linemen. Um, I've seen some people say maybe they go Kyle Hamilton. I mean, maybe they go, they draft a wide receiver. For me, though, I'm, I'm with you, Anish. I think pick fives between Neil and Sauce, and they end up with both of them in this. I'm going to take Ahmad Gardner from Cincinnati at pick seven. He's my CB1. He has been for a long time, even before it was consensus. Uh, you guys know how much I was in love with, with Sauce as the college season wore on. He's the best press corner in this class. He's sticky. Um, maybe lacks the athleticism that Derek Stingley had, but his tape is, I think, the best in this class at the cornerback position. Uh, I really like Sauce Gardner. And t- getting Evan Neal and Sauce at five and seven is, I think, the perfect draft for the Giants. Yeah, the Giants would be ecstatic with that. And uh, to touch on the previous two picks, uh, Charles Cross and Malik Willis, it was going to come down to that in that board. And I think the Panthers will be happy with either one. Malik is a project, and I think obviously the Panthers will buy themselves some time with that. Uh, But that's a pretty dynamic backfield. You're talking about Malik Willis and Christian McCaffrey. Uh, I kind of like that. And obviously, at least he can throw it down the field to guys like, you know, DJ Moore and Robbie Anderson. So uh, it would be interesting to see. And then for pick seven, I'm not, you know, I don't think Sauce is consensus CB1. Obviously, I would rank him one right now, but Stingley's got the most upside. I think Sauce is the best floor out of any corner. He has the least problems. Um, and, you know, if you're kind of drafting like that, he also has, I think, the best frame uh, for any corner in this league. And that's why, or sorry, in this draft. And that's why he was so good in press coverage. So now I guess we're going pick eight. I'm really, um, again, I, I keep going, you know, torn between two pl- uh, two prospects here because I thought uh, I thought you were gonna actually scoop up Kyle Hamilton, um, but okay, you went with Sauce as as okay, kind of like a chalky pick, but um, I'm gonna go with Garrett Wilson, uh, first receiver taken off the board here. Uh, I actually just I think like reposted something on my uh, Goop Sports page about it. I, I think it's a perfect fit, uh, Garrett Wilson to the ATL. Uh, while Calvin Ridley is kind of away, he can, you know, really learn in the Arthur Smith's offense and really be the wide receiver one. And when Calvin comes back, you've got two guys who play really similar, but both can go off at any point. Uh, and I think Garrett Wilson is a guy that you just put up at X and you say, hey, go get it. And Calvin Ridley, remember his best year to date 
was kind of playing, you know, alongside Julio Jones. We have yet to really see him beat number one corners consistently. And I think Garrett Wilson is that guy that can. So uh, I would love that type of tandem along with Kyle Pitts. And you really have an offense now that's maybe a quarterback away in 2023 from being a really potent offense. I agree. I think Garrett Wilson would be an excellent fit for the Falcons. You know, you put him alongside Kyle Pitts. He's just he's just a really complete, dependable type of receiver at the next level. Obviously, talk about what he can do after the catch. Um, he can catch passes outside his frame, which I think is really impressive. Uh, very smooth route runner. He can separate really well. So I, I, I like the pick for the Falcons here. You got to get weapons. Seattle at number nine. I think quarterback, it's definitely on the table for the Seahawks here after the Wilson trade. But I think with the weakness of this quarterback class, Malik Willis is already off the board in this scenario. I think they're going to look at other needs on their roster and then look at the next quarterback class for a quarterback. So with that being said, the Seahawks have had issues with their offensive line for a while now. And right now it's, in my opinion, the weakest position group on the roster. I mean, it's just terrible. I think Charles Cross could come in and be the starting left tackle from day one. And most mock drafts, and I guess including this one now, they have Cross coming off the board after Aquano and Neal, but I know there's analysts out there who really believe he's in the same tier as a prospect as both of them. And I think I can understand it. I, I, he definitely fits the mold to be a left tackle in the NFL. Uh, good size, good strength, uh, good movement skills. He's, he's, he has the physical tools. And I think at Mississippi State this year, you know, you really saw it come all together for him. Um, he didn't give up a single pressure in two games against Texas A&M and Alabama, which I found very impressive because – he can dominate against high level players that, you know, are going to play in the NFL. So I think Charles Cross is the pick here for Seattle. And I think they'd be ecstatic that someone like him would fall to them at nine. Yeah, you're right. And some people have Cross as their top ranked offense tackle and OPFF has him as I think number one uh, tackle and maybe even two or three on their full, their full draft board. So there's definitely analysts that are high on him with the Seahawks. I think you're right. It's either Cross or I would look at Jermaine Johnson. It's, yeah. it's kind of pick whatever position you feel you want more i hope they don't draft for need because they're a team that no matter who they pick i think is going to be at the bottom of the barrel next year um so don't draft for positional need draft the best player available in this case i think it makes sense that it would be cross um i know a lot of people think hamilton is that guy but they're loaded you don't, I, that's one position they're loaded yeah i was, I was gonna say like they don't bringing back uh bringing back quandre, quandre diggs, diggs they don't need another safety. And the fact they've already invested a little too much in safety as we're about to get to at pick 10, that you don't draft one with the ninth pick after all they have. Speaking of that, the their 10th pick for the Jets came from the Seahawks. Um, and I'm going to get to complete, in my opinion, the, the perfect first round for the Jets, and that's taking Drake London at pick 10. I've said for a long time, Thibodeau at four and London at 10 is the Jets' best case scenario. If they trade for a wide receiver like uh, A.J. Brown or Debo Samuel – or any of the other wide receivers that are rumored to be available, then I don't think they make this pick. But as of right now, it's looking less and less likely that's going to happen. And I think London has been the consensus Jets' number one draft pick for a long time uh, and at wide receiver. He's great. I know you guys were talking with the un, uh, totally unqualified that he can't separate. He might not be as good at separating as some of these other guys, but he can absolutely separate. He's still a good route runner, um, terrific frame. He's a big body guy. He makes every contested catch. He's one of the best receivers in this class and in college football last year after the catch. He's impossible to bring down. He has a basketball background that allows him to really catch screens and slants and everything in transition. Um, and he's kind of just it's it's almost like outlet outlet passes in basketball where he catches it and he's just straight down the field and you just can't bring him down it takes three or four guys to tackle him just about every time and i think he is the perfect fit and match with zach wilson um with the deep ball zach can put it in places where last year jets players weren't exactly able to come down with it drake london is going to be a guy and i still think he can separate if he couldn't separate then yeah maybe i'd be worried about him being in a kill Harry, but his route running is at a, as a, at a different tier than Harry's was. And I still think he can separate. So I don't want to hear the, uh, the can't separate disrespect. <laughs> I'm going to say two things. One, um, for those who are wondering, Jack did not pay us uh, to, you know, make these picks so the jets could have this perfect draft. And two, uh, you would think this video is sponsored by USC athletics, but unfortunately we're not. Um, yeah, with the way he's talking about Drake London. And yes, well, I said he can't separate. Well, um, if if there was a Cal prospect close to the first round, maybe you could talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah, there is not. Um, 
But yeah, I, I do agree with uh, at least the fit. Uh, as, you know, we may not be as, I may not be as high on Drake London as Jack, but I do agree, you know, because they were throwing the routes that Drake London would come down with to Elijah Moore last year. And Elijah Moore is just not mm-hmm. that type of player. Uh, yeah. So I think, you know, with I mean, Drake, and, and you don't want to use, um, oh my God, what's the guy's name from the Jaguars? I'm, I'm totally blanking on names right now. I've been talking way too much baseball to remember all the football yeah. names I normally would. Um, Vishka I'm going to come. No, no, the, they the the guy they signed from the Jags and Christian I'm blanking Kirk. on his name. He was no, 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 no. The guy that the the Jets signed from the Jags in last year's free agency, not this year's free agency. Oh man, I'm gonna come. I'm gonna come back with his name. Yeah, in you a got second, me. But, you got me mixed up too. Um, but no, I think you're right. It's about fit. I I think London is my wide receiver one, but I think Wilson makes more sense for the Falcons. Um, I think London makes more sense for teams like the Commanders or the Texans who need that kind of like outside big body reliable guy because I mean the Texans already have a Brandon Cooks to stretch the field um and the Falcons already have Kyle Pitts who's like they're play different positions but he's more of a comparable you can throw him up he's a big body guy they don't need as another one of those targets um but yeah I, I think London's the perfect fit with the Jets and if they if they are if they end up taking Thibodeau at four and taking London at 10 I'll be so happy and then I'll get to look forward to a pick right at the start of the second round and right after that, a couple of picks later. So two picks at the top of the second, I'll be very happy. Okay. I hope you're not talking about Corey Davis cause he didn't come from the Jags. Um, but uh, no, I'm going to okay. find the name. Give me a second. At pick 11. I'm at a tough spot now because I really wanted to go with London or Wilson to the commanders. Obviously I'm not a commanders fan, but you guys know who their quarterback is and why I, I am a little bit of a commanders uh fanatic right now uh so this is a tough one um and again it comes down to two prospects for me uh but i'm going a little bit this one's probably the first surprise of our board gonna go with chris olave out of ohio state the ohio state university and my reasoning for that is that chris olave is a great fit with what i guess the commanders have uh you can put terry mclaurin at x and olave can be your receiver too and he's a very great route runner uh, he can take the top off of defenses while Terry McLaurin, you know, can run your underneath routes and stuff like that. And then you have Curtis Samuel in the slot. Yes, it's an all Ohio State unit. And yes, that might seem a little biased. But I think that is a really good receiving core for a guy like Carson Wentz to maybe, you know, try and rehabilitate uh, what is left of, you know, the fans that still like him. So and his kind of career. So I think this is a make or break year for Wentz. Uh, and this is a big year for, you know, the commanders to show something offensively and i think olave would be a big big help for that so i guess this is the first kind of reach on the board but uh yeah i'm here for it i was just saying before the podcast i, I think i thought chris olave would be a good fit with the commanders um and here he takes him at 11 i, I great route runner very fast he had that 43940 yard dash and obviously you have that buckeye trio right there so good for carson Wentz. i mean you give him another weapon so i i, I like the pick hey, i'm excited um i'm not sure i'm not sure how much it fits though i think that he profiles very similarly to the guys that they already have. And I've, I've said this about a thousand times now about Olave. I think he is pretty much Tyler Lockett. And I just don't think that's, if you're picking at pick 11, I don't know if the value is there for Olave. I think I'd much rather have um, a guy like to pick your pick of whichever corner you like more and Stingley or McDuffie, maybe even Kyle Hamilton. Um, I would not hate them taking a, an offensive lineman. I don't know if, Olave is the best value for them at pick 11. I, that is, I, I will agree with that. Um, especially because I think they let go of Landon Collins too. Like they're in need, yeah. I guess, of a defensive back. I like Cam Curl. I like Kendall Fuller. I think they still have guys out there. Uh, but I think you're looking at a team that just needs offensive help. Like I think they're, and yeah, I think an offensive lineman would make sense, especially because they lost Brandon Sheriff. Uh, but to say that they can't get that in the second and third rounds, I, disagree with and I think Olave just I think fit wise though I think you're underestimating how he can be like I I like the Tyler Lockett comparison but that's the thing right Terry McLaurin doesn't have to now run these you know go routes and these flies and Olave can be that type of guy to do that and uh if anything at least Wentz can get the ball down there instead of Taylor Heineke he just has a better arm plain and simple so I think yeah in that that case I might lean Jamison Williams though if if yeah I would if you want to use him in a deep ball yeah, my only cool. thing with him is just uh, will team like because for me, if healthy, he is the consensus number one for me. And honestly, he still might be. It's just the questions. Do you really want to spend the eleventh overall pick on that type of question? I'm I'm not sure because tearing your ACL at this age, uh, we just don't know how the rehab is going to be. So 
uh, as, as good as he is. And I still think he can be just a little bit of questions, which is why I think they're willing to reach on someone like this. And we've seen uh, other scouts and rumors about how Olave might be going earlier than we think. And while y'all were talking about that, I was trying to figure out what the Vikings are going to do at 12 here because Kyle Hamilton and Derek Stingley are both on the board. <sighs> Look, I, you see in the team needs there, it's a safety and cornerback. Both, both guys are kind of, you know, risks. I, I'm going to stick. I'm going to stick with what, you know, I was thinking before this mock draft, I'm going to, I'm going to say Derek Stingley to the Vikings. So Kyle Hamilton will continue sliding uh, at least for the time being. And obviously there's the injury risk with the list Frank injury. Uh, but I just think he's, he's still just too good of a prospect to fall, you know, out of the top 15, as some people are suggesting. Um, and the good thing for Stingley is he looked good at his pro day on Wednesday. So, you know, if, if, if team doctors are satisfied with the progress he's made recovering from that injury, then he shouldn't really fall too much. And when he's healthy, obviously he's one of, he's easily one of the best players in the draft. And on top of that, he plays corner, which is a position that is very valuable in today's NFL with how important the passing game has become. Um, he has all the physical tools you could pretty much want in a corner, great size, very athletic. He moves really well. Um, and he can play the ball really well as well, really well as well. So I think, I think Stingley's going to be the pick here. And I think Minnesota is really high on him as well. So I'm going to stick with that. I'm fairly confident pick 12 is going to come down to Stingley or McDuffie, whichever one that the Vikings like more. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's a toss up for me. I think if you, really need someone to play on the outside you should take stingley and hope that you're getting 2019 Derek stingley and not 2020 or 2021 Derek stingley and where he just didn't play as well it didn't look like he was trying quite as hard and he had injury issues if you have the versatility and ability to play them anywhere i think mcduffie can come on the field in year one and maybe be the best slot corner in the league like his he's he's amazing i think he can also suffice on the outside um but i if I'm the Vikings, I maybe lean McDuffie, but it's it's hard to not be tantalized by what you could be getting with Stingley, which is the best player in the class at pick 12. Um, so I, I definitely understand the pick, and I think it's a better pick. I'm going to take Kyle Hamilton at 13. Yeah, I don't – I mean, we've heard all, all about how the media is higher on him than the league is, and I think that's because the media is saying that he can be this generational safety prospect where I think he's kind of more of a, of, of a field rover. I don't think he has the range uh, of like Justin Simmons or the speed of some of those guys. I don't think he hits quite as hard as Derwin James. So I don't think you're drafting him to use him as that single high, that safety who can go from sideline to sideline, but he's a very good defensive weapon. He can be a very, very good player. I would not have liked this pick if they take Kyle Hamilton at pick three, but if you take him at pick 13, I think that's far better value. And I think that's where it starts to make sense for Kyle Hamilton. I also think this might be his floor. I don't think he makes it to the Ravens at 14, the Eagles at 15 or the saints at 16. So I think it, this is kind of that sweet spot where I like Kyle Hamilton in the first round. Yeah, I agree with the Texans taking him, but I disagree with you saying he can't be a single high. I think he's got, I think from sideline to sideline, he's a really good, like his tape shows he's a pretty good safety. I agree he's not as hard of a hitter as uh, Derwin James, but, and I think he plays a lot faster in pads, which is why I'm not, I'm, I'm not discouraged by the 40 yard dash he ran. I, I think you can put him in single. I, 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 think, I, I mean, you can, he's not a rotation. If safety. you're taking a, if you're taking a safety at 13, like I'm just saying like you can't call him one of the best players in the class because of his sideline to sideline ability like he's good but he's not this top billing bet right I would come take on the field the be the best of the O lineman over him I, I agree with that yeah and so I just think like his I don't think his best position would be single high that's that's my take I don't think he would be I don't think that's where you're going to get the most value out of him interesting interesting we'll see we'll see what he gets to the league um, I'm on pick 14. Uh, I think this is an obvious one mainly because, uh, the Ravens re-signed Calais Campbell. Uh, I'm going to go Trent McDuffie out of Washington. Uh, and my reason why is they lost Tavon Young. Uh, and this guy is a perfect slot corner, literally perfect to play nickel. Uh, and one thing that people don't realize, uh, when we watch football is how important the nickel corner position is. It, is so vital in today's defenses because they have to play like a weak side linebacker when you run the football and they have to cover like a true cornerback when you pass it. And if they give inside or outside leverage, 
they're screwed. I've said this, you know, over and over again, and I think McDuffie is probably the best guy to play uh, nickel corner. And for a Ravens team that already has Marlon Humphrey and Marcus Peters, who, you know, aren't getting any younger, uh, at least Peters isn't. So I think this is a guy that, you know, can come in right away and be a really, really solid defensive piece, especially on third down. Yeah, I like the pick. Uh, I think Trent McDuffie's coverage skills are, you know, really good, good speed, quickness, great instincts. My only real concern for him is his arm length, but I don't think that's going to be a deal breaker for a lot of teams. So uh, I think this is a good spot for him. I think in Baltimore, they can really develop him. And I think he's a good fit with what they got going on there. Uh, But now the Philadelphia Eagles, their first of two picks right here at number 15. The Eagles added Kaiser White to their linebacker group this offseason. So linebacker isn't necessarily a big need for them. However, I think Devin Lloyd would provide a boost to this defense. So I think that's where they're going to go with their first of these two selections. I mean, Lloyd has shown everything you want to see in a potential starting linebacker in the NFL. Um, He's been really consistent at Utah. uh, First team all Pac-12 in 2020. He was an All-American this season. I mean, he's just consistently performed well in all areas of playing linebacker. He can defend the run, uh, great tackler. He can pressure the quarterback, great in coverage. So You know, he may not have the athleticism that you typically see in linebackers who usually come off the board at this spot. He's still a very good football player, and I think he'd fit Philadelphia's defense, and I I think this would be a good uh, pick for them. Yeah, like I said, big fan of both of those picks. Devin Lloyd specifically, I think, fits the Eagles and kind of what they need. They've needed a coverage linebacker for the longest time. I know Eagles fans will probably be happy to have Lloyd in there, and he can be one of the more lockdown linebackers in the league, I think. I think this is also a perfect situation for the Saints. I'm going to have them go Jamison Williams here. They really need wide receiver. They've needed it for a very, very long time. This is when you take it. I think you ahead of the, the chargers and ahead of even team people have taken him uh, for the Eagles that I've seen take him before both of those teams can get their hands on him. I think he matches up very well with Michael Thomas who, yeah, you call him slant boy all you want, but he gets open underneath in the middle of the field and Williams can take the top off of the defense. I think they are kind of a match made in heaven for each other. Really like this pick for the States if it works out. Yeah, I'm going to touch on the last two picks, especially the Eagles one. Uh, Devin Lloyd, again, I've raved about him. Uh, all the scouts, my fellow scouts up here in the office rave about him as well. Uh, Pac-12, just an amazing, amazing linebacker. I think he's got all the tools and the frame. Uh, and the Eagles, I, I saw a couple fans kind of get, you know, say he wouldn't get playing time. I disagree. I mean, him over TJ Edwards any day. And with the defense that they run, they run a 4-3. Uh, he'll play middle and then they'll probably have uh, Kaiser play a weak side. Uh, and Hassan play strong side. So uh, I love the pick there. And then same thing for the Saints, Jamison Williams. Yeah, I think him or Olave would be perfect here. They can perfectly complement Michael Thomas. Uh, so I love the pick here. It's not a reach at all. Obviously, there is a little bit of concern with the injury. And, you know, we've seen Michael Thomas be back and forth with the injury the last couple of years. But bo- both are studs. Uh, I think JMO is going to be great for the Saints. Uh, now for the Chargers. Uh, I don't know if this is an obvious pick, but I'm going to go with uh, Jordan Davis now that J- uh, JMO is not there. And my reason is the Chargers run a base 3-4 uh, and a nose tackle. They've got Austin Johnson, and I'm sure most of you haven't heard of him. I don't think he's the best. Uh, so I think Jordan Davis is a great, great fit here uh, for this Chargers unit. And now you're looking at a front seven with Joey Bosa, Khalil Mack, and the 6-6-3, what, 3-40 like 40 monster that uh, ran, what, a 4 7 40? <laughs> I mean, things are going to be looking up scary uh, in L.A. We've got some uh, really strong firepower uh, from the L.A. Chargers now. I think that's a great pick. Yeah, I like the pick here. It's one that the whole draft community has been on. They, want, they really want to see Jordan Davis. In L.A., next to Sebastian Joseph Day would really shore up their run defense. There are concerns, obviously, if he can be an every-down guy. But, I mean, if he is that good for the snaps that he's playing, I think this would be a solid fit with the Chargers. Um, Now the Eagles at 18, Jermaine Johnson is still on the board, so I think that's the direction they're going to go here. I mean, the hype for Jermaine Johnson has really picked up recently. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he goes higher than this. Maybe in the top 10, maybe uh, it could happen. Um, But he has solid tools, uh, really solid tools, good size. Um, He's lengthy. He's great athleticism. Uh, I know he transferred away from a very loaded Georgia defensive front over to Florida State. He was very productive there. Um, Rock solid as a run defender. So I think this would be a big boost for a team that really needs youth along their defensive line. Yeah, that's who I would have gone with at 19 for the Saints. Anish, can you sort by edge? I want to see everyone who's available at edge. Yes. Uh, how do I do that? Um, you go over the like, hover over position and it should bring up. Uh, 
like the, oh, down, right like here. down below. Yeah, I got it. There you go. Ooh, you see, this is this is a tough one because you know the this Saints one are, is a tough. The Saints come, are one hey, of those come teams on. where they kind of go off the board. Like I uh, was it Peyton Turner last year from Houston was yeah. on none of our radars uh, in the first round, and they ended up taking him. Hmm. Can you come go back on. to overall? Yes, please. Can we please go for the guy that I want? But you know he's not a scheme fit. <sighs> no, no, no. That's not the guy I want. No, I'm leaving him for you at pick 20. <laughs> no, I'm not taking him there. I'm not taking him there. He, it, they have they have Jameis Winston. Jameis Winston is is go, is better than Kenny Pickett. Like he's not okay. My whole thing with it is that he gives you stability. Winston cannot give you that. He's too roller coaster. And I, I he wasn't was as roller coaster. Kenny Pickett last year, is though. also a rookie. Yeah, but I, but that's why I'm saying you can groom him. Like I, I would love because here's the thing. I, I mean, and also we don't know if Dennis Allen's going to continue being the Saints head coach. If you get an offensive coach in 2023 and then pick it after a year. Right, really learn his system, and then finally, you know, he's already got a year kind of learning under NFL uh, personnel. I don't. I like pick. I mean, obviously, it's not my pick, but yeah, I would probably go pick it here. See, I just I, I like Jameis Winston, and you know, I've been I think I've been yeah. high on yeah. Jameis for a while, and adding Jameis and Williams just makes even more sense for Jameis because um, he can throw it. I mean, I guess he can throw it. Down yeah, field. and I just I'm not all that sold on Pickett, um, and I think he makes far more sense for the Steelers who don't even have a quarterback right now. Like, I'm gonna go with um, Devonte Wyatt here. I think that's where the value is. Um, okay. I think that's it's better to go best player available. He might be better than Jordan Davis. Uh, it's kind of been my thought process throughout the entire thing. I think he's a way better pass rusher than Davis will be. He's not as big, and he's. I mean, I just don't think he's gonna be as good at stopping the run. But if we're talking even just straight up combine, he had a, he had a generational combine that was just simply outshined by Davis's performance because Davis did it at a bigger weight. But Wyatt was just as good in all the in all the drills and all the testing. A better pass rusher, plays more snaps. He could very well be the DT one. And I think that this isn't a pressing need for the Saints, but I'm going to go BPA here. Um, I think that's kind of where the value is. All right. Well, to your contrary or to popular belief, contrary to popular belief. I am not going Kenny Pickett. Tell me why, though. Like, I want to know, like, they do not have a quarterback. Well, they have Mitch Trubisky. Like, it's like he's a bridge, right? Okay, and... come on now. <laughs> no, no, no. I, hold on. Like, how, about, how, about, how about your boy, Kenny Pickett, goes in and becomes the – are you doing it just because you're a Browns fan? No, 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 I'm not. I'm not. He's My literally whole from thing... Pitt. No, he's, but he's the... I, I know, but look, Trevor Penning is such a way – it's a way better fit. Like, the, the Steelers need O-line bad, and I think I think this is where – like, can okay – this, I think Mitch Trubisky right now is a solid starter going in 2021. I fully believe that. I fully believe he is not the worst starter in the NFL. He's not. I mean, I would take him over Marcus Mariota. I would take him over Daniel Jones right now. And that's coming from me. Like, I, there are a lot of, like, I, I think he's still in that upper 20s for quarterback starting going into 2022. Or in sorry, this case, yeah. are you saying he's better than Jameis Winston then? Because you wanted me to take Winston over or take Pickett over Oh, you're Winston? saying, is Trubisky better than Winston? Honestly, well, yeah, because if, if, if you won't take Pickett over honestly, Trubisky. Honestly, I, I, I'm willing to say that, yes. Yes. I honestly am willing to say that. So I'm going to go with Tre Trevor Penning. I think it makes perfect sense. I mean, like, he's a, he's a power run scheme. What, what do the Steelers always have? What, what are they going to do with Najee Harris? It's, it's, it's a perfect scheme fit. They need offensive line badly. They had to reset it kind of the last couple of years with all the guys they've been losing. For example, you know, DeCastro, Villanueva, uh, and obviously Pouncey retired. So I think this is where you kind of, you know, get some guys back into this whole line. You know, the Steelers groom them really well. Uh, and this continues, unfortunately, the picket slide, um, but which I didn't expect. Uh, no, I'm kidding. But yeah, Trevor Penning at 20. I, I like, I, I think this is a, as much as I hate it for the Steelers, I think it's a slam dunk of a pick. It's an interesting pick. Trevor Penning definitely has a mean streak to him. Um, obviously, we've seen tape on how he finishes. Um, you know, it, it, it's 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 an it's an interesting pick at twenty, especially with Kenny Pickett on the board. But no, it. I think it's the right pick. It's somewhat, it, I guess, it's somewhat understandable. At twenty one, I I just don't know what to make of the Patriots. I I don't know where they're going to go in this draft. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with George Karlaftis at this pick. Uh, okay. I think they need. I think they need an edge rusher. Uh, he's definitely a power rusher. Uh, good size, long arms. He has a lot of strength, um, and obviously he had 
he had he had a great freshman year. Uh, and this season, he's gotten to the quarterback with consistency. It's a tough pick to project, but I think Bill Belichick will like George Karlaftis, and I think he can really develop him into a into a stud at the next level. I think he's a good pairing for Judon, too. Um, being yeah. able to go speed on one side, power on the other, mm -hmm. is exactly kind of what they want to do. And the Patriots have those role players where they'll bring in guys who, who have speed when they need speed, and they'll bring in guys who have power when they need power. Karlaftis is maybe the best power rusher in this class uh, outside of Aiden Hutchinson. I, I like that pick a lot. Yep. The Packers at 22 sort by wide receiver. Cause I'm not going no. to single other. <laughs> no, you're, you're not. You're going to, you're going to actually go with the wide receiver and not pass on them. Like the Packers have been doing for the last, you know, I'm going to take, I'll take Kenny Pickett here. <laughs> <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> That'd if be so funny. I'm, I'm, <laughs> if they didn't have Jordan love, if they had traded him by now, oh maybe think God. about it. I would not be surprised. That um, be so funny. So I like, the fit of Traylon Burks, um, but I don't like the player quite as much as I like some of the other players on this board. Jack, um, come on. Since I know I have the Packers pick later, I might be interested in doubling up at wide receiver. We'll see how the board plays out. For now, I think I'm going to go with Christian Watson from North Dakota State. I think he fits just like MVS in that offense, but he's better. He's a bigger body. Um, he can go up and make more catches at the catch point. Um, he has the same speed. He's he has the most upside, I think, of any wide receiver in this draft class. Being at the size that he is, almost 6'5", and running in the low 4'3s. He excellent combine, great athletic score. The only thing that concerns me a little bit is his hands, um, but I'm more, I'd am more i feel more confident about his hands than MBS's hands. So he'll be able to fit in that offense, give Aaron Rodgers a I, – I, I, I guess it's kind of like a similar thing to what he had last year with MBS, so he can be a little bit more familiar on that offense. But I think – Watson has a far higher ceiling than, than MBS does. Honestly, I think his floor, like if, if the worst that you're going to get from Watson would be Marquez Valdez Scantling. So I like that pick at 22. Man, I don't, uh, I don't know. I mean, I, okay, look, here's, here's the, the thing with, I'm a Traylon Burks guy and I just think that they can, they can use him the way, like, obviously he's not as good as Devontae Adams. No way he is, but his frame and the way he was used at Arkansas he was used as a bona fide true number one. They gave him every route that he that you know you could think of, bubble screens, over the middle, down the field. I mean, they used him in every way, shape, or form. And I think the Packers need a receiver that you can you do that with. That's just not really the Packers, though. That's not their offense. And that's not Devontae Adams. I mean, well, like they, but Aaron Rodgers is the type of guy where he like Aaron Rodgers always almost always hits his primary read. Almost always. And and like, that's, that's the, and I think Christian Watson is just the guy that you're probably going to be a second read on a lot of the routes he runs just because he is, as you said, six, five, and he's going to be running a lot of those downfield routes. I just, I just don't know. Like, you know, I mean, obviously we all agree that Aaron Rodgers is, you know, loves guys that he can trust. And obviously rookie receivers, he's going to take some, some time with them, but I just think Traylon Burks is just a more versatile weapon that they would be able to use. Yeah, I just don't think it really matches the Packers offense. And I think that I've got a guy in mind at 28. If I do double up on wide receiver that I think pairs a little bit better because you know, everyone talks about Burks as this like gadget guy who can be like Debo Samuel. And that's just not the Packers. That's not what they do. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And he's, no, and he cannot run routes to the same level that, that Adams can. Yeah, I mean, no one can. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, I know he can. He can. He can develop. Good route runner, though. I mean, no one can. But like, it's like, I mean, you know, Devonte Adams had his problems coming in into the league. I mean, it's not like this dude was a polished player. So True. at least you know we they have staff that have worked with Adams and have really groomed him. I think to say that Traylon Burks can't you know increase his game. Yeah, I'm just not sure. But the uh, athletic the athletic scores scare me a little bit. But yeah, I get I get a, a little bit of an easy pick here. Uh, Tyler Linderbaum for the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, they need interior linemen badly uh, with, I believe, the loss of Rodney Hudson. So this is a pretty easy pick for me. Yeah, I like it. I know that, you know, the media thinks that he's going to really fall all the way to 31 to the Bengals. And it's not even because of his talent. No. It's, just, it's just because the position he plays and center is just not as valued in the first round. So. I like the pick for the Cardinals. Definitely beef up the O-line for Kyler Murray. Uh, at 24, I think the Cowboys go in the same direction. I think they go O-line. Uh, obviously, you have Connor Williams leaving to sign with the Dolphins. And, you know, you have a hole at guard now. So Zion Johnson and Kenyon Green are both potential options here. Um, and I think in this scenario, they're going to get Johnson. Uh, he projects well to the NFL as both really? a blocker and a pass protector. I think he's got the strength to move defenders in the run game. Um, any bull rushes that come his way, he can fend that off too. And 
he uses his hands well in blocking, and I think he's worthy of a first round pick. With how many teams need offensive line help, I, I think Hicks could be a potential option. Um, but I think I think the Cowboys definitely definitely go with either Johnson or Green here, and I think in this case it was Zion Johnson for me. Green's from Texas A and M. Like, I just Zion's better. Yeah, he's just, I, yeah, yeah, I know. What, that's why, can he like, it, can he pick us from Pittsburgh? Zion, Zion felt that's why Zion. Exactly. I, I wanted, huh? Can he pick? I said, I said can he pick it from Pittsburgh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. <laughs> Zion, no, but I thought Zion. I thought Streetcar was gonna go with uh, Zion or Andrew Booth for the Pats. That's why I thought you know Kenyon Green was gonna be perfect for Dallas or Nicobe Dean. But I mean, yeah, I, I, they do need interior line help. Obviously, what they've lost Frederick Williams over the last couple of years. It's like, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, they need it. I, I just, yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I, I think either one. Uh, you go with either one. I don't think. Cowboys fans will complain. I'm surprised you didn't take Burks at 23. I think he's he. I think he'd be very good for the for the Cardinals. I thought about it. I did. Um, but I. I mean, you just got Rondell Moore. Now you'll be able to use him. Think about it. Like they they didn't use him really. But much I think it's because they just and realized Antoine that his body. Good. I know. I, I just think they realized that his body won't be able to hold up, and he can't do. He can do the little gadgety things. But if you have a guy out there that they know cannot play on the outside, cannot really run a route deeper than five to 10 yards down the field because he's limited frame wise, I, I just think they realized they couldn't quite have him on the field as much as they did early in the, in the year. No, I'm talking about Rondell. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. And, and, and Burks gives them the ability to do that, but also have a frame that can withstand hits down the field. Mm-hmm. And that like, even if you're not going to use him that way, Teams can't just immediately bank on if he's on the field and if he's going to be running a route, it's going to be a short screen or anything like that. I think that was the problem that they ran into with more. I mean, they they could. I mean, they they had a couple plays downfield for him. It's like, yeah. but I think Wesley Wesley really had a good, uh, you know, last quarter of the season. So yeah, while D Hop and obviously Christian Kirk were dealing with, or no, I think just I think it was mainly D Hop. But uh, I mean, he was kind of their number one while D Hop was out. Yeah, I forgot to say this too, but corner could also been an option at twenty three. Yeah, I, yeah, I've, yeah, yeah. Um, I was not expecting Andrew Booth to be here at this pick. Uh, I think he might go to the Patriots at 21 to be a JC yeah, Jackson yeah. replacement, uh, just because he's got the ball skills. Originally in this pick, I was I've been thinking for the Bills I, IOL the entire time, either Johnson or Green, whoever's available, like whoever doesn't go at 23 or 24. But with Booth available, I think outside of on the other side of Tredavious White is the perfect pick. I, I don't. I didn't think he'd be available, and I think that's a really, really good fit for the Bills. Yep. Yeah, I agree with that. Okay, this one, the Titans, it's very hard for me. I look. Okay, QB. If I'm looking, if I'm looking at the board, right? Like, I'm, I'm not. Okay, you know, I, you know what I was thinking? I was actually thinking about Pickett. No, I'm, Just, I, I, I look. Legitimately think they might go quarterback. That's yeah. that's what so that's what I was thinking. Like, cause with the board falling, and I was like, wait a minute, like you're leaving Pickett this far down, like, or do they? Like, I'm also thinking about O line though, just because they do need, and I guess Kenyon Green is here. Could make sense to take a wide receiver too. Yeah, just because with the whole who's AJ available Brown, defense, who's available, just a couple spots down the board. Because edge, I think this is this is maybe where we see that second wave of edge come off. Um, I, just, I mean, be it Ebiketti or Mafe. Yeah, I was thinking Mafe. I'd like Mafe in Tennessee. I mean, work. I think okay. Just because I like I I cannot see a scenario where Pickett goes out of the first round. Like, what in what way does I mean? Well, I mean, he might if he if he doesn't get drafted here, he might be drafted in pick twenty seven. <clears throat> Yeah, you're right. Uh, I mean, and I, know, I don't I think he gets past the Lions at 32. Yeah, yeah 30, he won't. Yeah. yeah, he's not getting past that. Actually, yeah, that's true. You know what? I, I'm thinking about Kenyon Green here. Honestly, interior O line. I think for the Titans it would be pretty good. So I'm gonna go. Yeah, I think he's BPA right now. Uh, so I'm gonna go with Kenyon Green. I'm just gonna take BPA. Okay, interesting. That was basically gonna be my pick at 27 for the Bucks. Um, what? Really? I, yeah. Kenyon Green? I, th- I think the Kobe Dean would be a slam dunk here. They have. Uh, nah, I, I, I'm. I actually think this is a name I've been keeping tab uh, tabs on. Can you can you filter a D line? Yep. 
Not edge, but just interior. Yeah, I know who you're going with. No way. Are you really? Uh, it's not Perry on Winfrey. If you were, if you were wondering. Um. Okay, never mind. Not who I thought. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and Dominic Sue, he's going to be a free agent. Uh, interior defensive line. It, it could be a potential position group they target on draft night. I'm going to say Travis Jones. I'm thinking Travis Jones. This is a name that I've heard, you know, in the first round buzz. I heard someone, I saw someone mock Travis Jones to the Bucks on in a video. And basically his reasoning was Todd Bowles is going to want to build that defensive line to a point where they won't need to load the box to stop the run. And if you get Travis Jones, I think it would provide exactly that. He's really good against the run. Um, he can handle multiple offensive linemen. So I, I think this would be a good pick for the Bucks here. It may not seem like, you know, the sexy pick, but I think Travis Jones would be a nice fit there. I, I, I definitely think that makes sense. And Anish, the point you bring up about like, you're going to want to have a, a linebacker there when Levante David's gone. I just don't think Dean is that guy. I think he's more like a Devin White where he runs around and hits things. And I'm not sure how much right, I trust yeah. him in coverage. So yeah. I think you you make your linebacking core have to do a little bit less by bringing in more on the defensive line. Um, and I just don't think you're like, I don't think Dean is a good Levante David replacement where this linebacker class is really deep and down the board. There are guys who can cover pretty well. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I like that picture. Yeah. Car. I think they could also go with some, I think they could also go edge and use like one of the guys that would be a, a four, three edge um, and use them to end more of an Indomitian Sioux role. Um, I think Kingsley, Kingsley and Agnagbury from uh, South Carolina could make sense for mm. the Packers. I don't, don't think I'm going to go another receiver because I think George Pickens would, be, if they don't go receiver, the first pick, I think Pickens at pick 28 makes a lot of sense for the Packers. I also think if their first pick was Christian Watson or they go uh, pick into their first pick and they want to double down, they could go Burks or I also like sky Moore in this spot or Jahan Dawson. I mean, it's kind of like their pick of the litter. Um, for this one, though, can you sort by edge? Yep. I think I'm going to go uh, Boye Mafe from Minnesota. Okay. I like it. Yep. I think they need help on the D-line. Um, and now you get so you get too. Rogers, you get Rogers a wide receiver, and now you also don't take two wide receivers for him because you know they're probably not going to do that. Um, and you sure up that defensive line. Uh, I like the pick. Mm -hmm. All right. So pick 29, what do the Chiefs want? To, I mean <sighs> – I mean, we've got, do you want to, do you guys want to do these last four together? Cause I mean, the chiefs have two and then we can get through 31, 32. Uh, yeah, sure. You want to do that? I mean, I'm leaning. Okay. Here's, I mean, I'll tell you what I'm thinking. I'm thinking Dax Hiller, John Dotson. I was thinking Sky. Moore. I think both. Yeah. I think Dotson makes a little bit more sense. Cause right. I don't, uh, I think, I think more is a pretty pure slot guy. And I think Dotson's build. Dotson makes is that guy sense. that can be a number one. Like he's. And I think with the, what the Chiefs have, like Juju, as as much as Jack wants him to be, he's not a wide receiver one. I don't. I don't think he's wide receiver one. Yeah. So I think I think Dotson has that potential. So I'm gonna take Dotson here. Can you scroll just, down a little bit? Yeah. Because I don't know. I also really like Lewisine or uh, Petrie at the Do end. Do you think of the they take round? a chance on Ojo? I know he tore his Achilles. How about Arnold I, think, I think he's Ebiketti. He I think Ebiketti would be a better option if they are going. Um, but Edge is pretty deep. Yeah, I think I think it's going to be one of the three safeties. Um, and I like your pick about Hill as well, because I think he gives you a little bit more versatility right. than exactly. those other two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I don't know. Shigar, what yeah, do you think? alongside Justin, Reed, you have you have Juan Thornhill and then you also have Justin Reed. So I don't I don't know if Daxton Hill would be the uh, actually what I, I, want them to go I might I, I might like Kyer Elam that, that yeah, to play corner. Uh, yeah, because they lost her very soon. Yeah, so op opposite uh, Jerry Sneed, I would like that too. You yeah, guys want to go, cool, go with that? I'm, I'm good with that. All right. All right, so I picked 31 here. I mean... <laughs> I think this might be where Hill would go. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no. Von Bell and Jesse Bell. Like, why? Why would he... Because uh, he can play He can play safety and corner. Yeah. But you and, have... And Bell, like, Bell, Bell plays you have my the like. Bell plays in the box anyway. Right, but you'd have to use Dax as then a, a nickel corner. You can't put him on like the outside. And I think Mike Hilton is pretty no, good. No, but for him. then he plays safety. If since mm -hmm. Bell's playing in the in the box. Who else? Who are the corners available? 
Um, well, Kyler Gordon is a is an interesting one to me, but I think I think if anything, because he is the most ver, I think he's the most versatile corner in this class. My only thing with it is I think the Bengals can low key wait and yeah. try and like trade up in the second round for him. And I I like some of those guys to to wait on later. Like I don't think these are first round corners right now. Yeah, yeah. I, I think safety's the move. There's got to be other. I mean, they could go edge as well. Like I, I like the guys that they have, but also there's value there. I think the interior line. I mean, like maybe oh, Tyler, are, Tyler Smith. Tyler, Tyler Smith's not a bad pick. Yeah. I just I, honestly, I really like what they did in free agency. I don't think they need to touch the offensive line. And if they're gonna go offensive line, I think Ryman makes more sense as a tackle. Yeah. Towards. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, actually, that's not bad either. I was really kind of sold on Tyler. You want you want to go Ryman? I'm I'm down. I've, I'm I with either I think prospect. either of those is fine. I mean, it's, I think it's, let's go with. We'll say they well, whoever whichever one they end is, up liking more. My only thing is, it's like where would you? I mean, you're not gonna put because Lyle did get replaced by Terrence Steele last year. So do you think like you want him as a as kind of a backup tech? Because I think they will start Jonah going into next year. Jonah could play guard as well. Yeah, I mean, oh. Ooh, I don't I, think you can go wrong I'd with like, no. I'd like that. Actually, let's just say you know let's yeah. just say they're gonna go with one or the other. Or we'll make the pick of Ryman. But we'll go Raymond, yeah, yeah. It's Raymond. not like either of them are gonna go at thirty-two. I don't. Lions think. gotta go pick it. I, I don't think they're gonna take a quarterback. Who? I. Who? Who? Who are you? Who are you well, doing? if not a cute. Well, let's see the that. let's see the the board. They so they went with they went with Trayvon Walker in the first round. Dax yeah. Hill. Um. Uh, Kenny Pickett is just sticking out like a sore thumb right now, and it's just it's killing me. I think you're pushing the narrative, freak. I, I like Dax Hill too. I I mean the Lions, like the last good safety they've had is what Glover Quinn. I mean, the the I mm, I like Dax Hill. Dang, so I wouldn't be surprised crazy. if they that got a receiver as well. Okay, no, because here's the thing: Dax Hill can play alongside Tracy Walker. That's true, right? I, I think Lewis Seen might fit a little bit better though. Mm. Could I think Dax is more? But talented. also think about it because the Lions the Lions are picking what second in the second round. They have thirty four. Yeah. They yeah. can get Dax Hill at that spot. I think they go line. They might go linebacker there. I mean, we yeah. can take Nicobe Dean here as well. Nicobe Dean, yeah, but, I, but Nicobe Dean will be there. I don't think he. I don't. They they, they put so much into linebacker already. Yeah, they paid. They paid uh, for you, uh, too much money. Mm. Um, wait. I think I, I'm fine with I, I, maybe receiver as well. Um, Pickens. Mm. Because Pickens, if they're Pickens not taking if they're not taking a quarterback here, you're getting the team prepped to take a quarterback. You don't like Traylon Burks alongside Amon Ra? Actually, they play similar. They're both. Yeah, I, I think I think Pickens might be a very good pick, but and 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 I think he's more likely to be taken by the Jags. Pickens is super boomer bust, but I think if you if you hit his potential with him, I mean he's gonna be insane. And he fits more what they need, I I would say, as opposed to to Burks. Okay, so you want to pass? Okay, so, so are we just go- ruling out QB? Yeah. Okay. I think so. All right. So we're ruling out. Okay, Dax Hill. We're ruling out. Ruling out Klein. Or sorry, uh, Lewis Sign or however you say him. Scene. Um, scene sorry i think it's between uh, pickens and hill honestly mm. yeah i think, I think dax yeah because dax is the more talented safety yeah mm-hmm. but i think, think right. you'll have you know your, what? I, th- I think you're gonna have your pick, pick of defensive him. guys at yeah because because jaguars went off went defense in round one i find it hard to believe that they're gonna go, they go with double. trevor lawrence coming back for his second year they're gonna go defense defense with their first two picks right so I think you take the offensive guy here in George Pickens, and whoever okay. you want of those guys will be available, whether it's Hill or Scene or Dean or an, another edge. I don't know. Right. Yeah. Because out of out of these three receivers, I think for the Lions, Pickens is the best fit. I agree. All right. Let's go. The only Pickens. thing is, it's a shocker though to take him in the first it, round. That's yeah. Big. I don't think so. I, I don't think anymore. Well, we took him, and there we yeah. go. Yeah. I like it. our draft. I guess we'll kind of scroll down really quick. One QB in the first round. One, yeah, that hey, there's our title. I'm right not there. surprised, honestly. <laughs> I, I think that's how it, it's it's going to be one or two. And I think if I wouldn't be surprised if Ritter is the second as opposed to Pickett. I'm I was I really boring, boring a trade up. If we see a trade up, that run. Pickett did not go in 19. I thought that's the pick that I mean, because the Saints, I guess, do have Dalton, but it's like Pickett didn't go at 20. 
no, no. Yeah, that, like, I, I was, I purposely like. I think Pickett, lob- no, I th- I think Trevor. But like, if okay, if you're the Steelers, right? What do you? Wh- who has a better long term? What's a better long term? They paid Mitch Trubisky like a backup. They did, knowing that I think they're going to draft Pickett or Ritter at twenty. Yeah, I they've had Penny's, meetings with quarterbacks all off season. Petting is just such a perfect fit for them. I can't pass it. Like, like you know, I'm an O line guy. As much as I'm a quarterback guy, like O line for for the Steelers is a must right now. Like, you cannot have Najee Harris running behind that offensive line. Next okay, but you year. also can't go into the season without a quarterback. No, tr- okay. Trubisky is Trubisky is a good starter going into 2022. I'm happy. Like, if I'm the Steelers, I'm okay with that. He's better than Big Ben. What big whatever Big Ben was uh, last year. He's better than that. I just think his potential I, is that. Well, he's learned under Josh Allen and Dable for a year. So we, we haven't seen him. Like, we, we really don't know what we're getting. And he was the second half of 2020. He was the second best quarterback against the Blitz. So it's not like the dude cannot play, right? I think the Steelers are okay with at least a guy who can throw the ball more <laughs> downfield more consistently than Big Ben. Uh, I'm kind of happy with that. And I think you get a power, uh, power run tackle who can really move at the second level, really strong with his hands, finish his blocks. Uh, is very fluid as a pass protector. I think that's the great. I don't know. I just who did the who the Ravens go with? Was it McDuffie? McDuffie. McDuffie. I think McDuffie. I think that might be where Penning goes. That could be an interesting one. I agree. That could be one. But I, I just think McDuffie is such a great fit for them. Like yeah, and he's a really good player. Like it's to you know to say him and like he played better than Singley did last year. Yeah. I, I don't think it's particularly yeah. close com- if you compare their. That's two why players. I kind of think that it's gonna go. Sauce in the top 10. Right. I think McDuffie goes at 12. And I think Stingley goes at 14 or 15. I think I think the Vikings would like I mean, you know, you have Pat Pete. I, I guess the narrative is a little bit there, right? You know, for another DB from LSU. But I yep. think the Vikings want someone with Stingley's upside. Like, if you're gonna take a corner here, you you want I think he gives them like he could be such a good piece for them. And I think McDuffie, like you're gonna have to put him in the slide and you're still lacking. I mean, Pat Pete just isn't the same C B one as he was. Mm-hmm. I think this is the this is a far less consensus draft than last year, where oh, uh, yeah. we were pretty confident about who the thirty two ish guys were going to be that were going to go in the first round. Right now, I mean, we don't know whether there's going to be one quarterback or three or four going in the first round. Right. We don't know outside of picks, pick one. We don't really and like the Giants taking a tackle and. Like the Jets, I mean, that'd be receiver. really big. Maybe the, and the set, I guess, and the like receivers going. I think the Washington's going to take a receiver. I'm pretty confident. There aren't a lot of clear needs, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's going to be a, it's going to be a wild draft. Yeah, this is how the board fell to us. I, I'm I'm honestly okay with a lot of the picks. I mean, what would you say your guys' favorite pick was? Uh, hmm. like favorite pick of the draft or the favorite one that we picked of the draft, like. Who I would give the best grade to? Like, yeah, who who did you like the most going to which team? Oh, I think the Giants nailed it. Yeah, yeah Giants got Giants and I mean Giants and Jets. I think got the perfect drafts that they could have. Right. Yeah, I like that too, and I think Seattle should be very happy with Charles Cross. Yeah, I, I think. Seattle, I think the I think, big takeaway is every team with multiple firsts did a you know a good job with the mm-hmm. blaming. Obviously, right. this is all barring a trade up because I'm for the QB situation. One trade up for a QB. It could spark right. a run. So I, the fact that it was non-trades, it just makes it a little bit interesting. But yeah, I feel yeah, like I mean the one know, unrealistic I, I, I thing would, we I'm had curious is to hear what our you know our fans think. Like mm-hmm. pick it not in the first round. I mean, I think that's, that's probably the biggest yeah. surprise to me in this this entire draft. I mean, yeah, I guess yeah, I, think I was it's, the it's one. So hard, it's so hard to do a mock with in a in a year like this where there's not many needs right. because it's very there's a lot less chalk. I don't think Pickett's going to fall out of the first round, but I just don't think it really worked out. The way yeah, the we way we're going we today, if, it, yeah. Because if he doesn't go to the Steelers, there's really no one down the board that needs him. Yeah. Um, I think Jermaine Johnson probably goes higher than 14, but I just at this point, like, I don't know how or where that happens. I mean, the Titans too. I'm just thinking, you know, what the Titans, I guess, had a lot. Jermaine of Johnson could be an option for Seattle if they choose to forgo offensive. That's line. that's. I mean, that's that's the guy. That's where I, where I kind of think he's gonna go. I would much rather if have Thibodeau, Charles Cross. I would too. Yeah, I, I think so too. If Thibodeau doesn't make it to the Jets at four, I think they go Sauce and their pick at ten might be Johnson because I Maybe. think they need to come out of the draft with an edge. 
but they right. also could take, I mean, cause we ended this, we ended the round with, uh, I, I, we can't see who's available, but I know Evacetti was available. Um, and there's a lot of second round edges on the board and they've got two at the top. So I don't know. I think Johnson probably won't be there at 18, but I don't, I, I like at this point, I just don't know how, like how that's going to happen. Mm. Yeah. And also, I mean, if the lions wanted to go pick it, I don't think anyone's going like at pick 33 or not. The Jags aren't taken. Yeah. Uh, Kenny Pickett. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I, I mean, yeah, I guess that makes a lot of sense because you'd rather pay the quarterback less, but, uh, but you also I have think, the fifth year if you go first round. I'm not, I'm not, uh, right. that's true. Yeah. I'm not, yeah. I don't think Pickett's the best fit for the Lions either. I, I think I might like Ritter more on that offense. I might even like Howell more on that offense. Oh, yeah, yeah. Actually, looking back, oh, no, Corral. I like Corral. Corral. But so yeah, let's think, I mean, we've got like three minutes left in the Zoom meeting, but <laughs> there are three that, I mean, three of the top quarterbacks in the draft in Pickett, Ritter, and Howell are still available in the second round. What teams, would take them in the second round. Um, I think. Like, what teams even need a quarterback at that point? I, no That's idea. a tough one. I look. I I think Howell's. I Howell genuinely has a lot of upside to me. I, I'm very high on. I, yeah, he might like, be my quarter. I mean, I was thinking he could have been my quarterback one. I think right now it goes for me. It would go Willis, Howell, Pickett, Ritter, or Ritter Pickett. I'm looking. I, I'm just like. I think I think quarterback rankings are kind of useless because we've seen it does not matter what they are really it's where they go. Yeah. I was thinking in the third round the Seahawks are picking at seventy two if they wanted to take a shot on Sam Howell right there. Mm-hmm. I think Corral Ooh. is a good fit for the Seahawks as well. Yeah, I, I do too. Um, uh, this is tough. I, I I I don't really see. I mean, obviously, like the team maybe Atlanta, but like I think Atlanta's in the market in twenty twenty. Tennessee potentially. I mean, I think you could also see. If Willis doesn't, if I think another po- a possibility Tennessee for Sam Howell, I would like what, what might make sense is the Panthers skip out on a quarterback at six. They go with cross at six. The Falcons take Willis at eight. The Seahawks take Johnson at nine. I wouldn't mind that. And then right. that's kind of how the, the board moves up. Right. Yeah. Willis and Atlanta would make a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. <sighs> I mean, I don't, I don't like that. I don't like Willis to Atlanta. I just think I just think he's too much of a project. Like, and he would have to start right away. No, I mean I think he still starts. Yeah, Mariota. Right I think he still oh, right. start Mariota, yeah. and yeah, Mariota might be the best guy to learn from. Yeah, he could learn. Yeah, he could learn a lot from Mariota. I think Steelers end up with a quarterback. He's also an Atlanta 52. native. Yeah, I think in round two, I think the Steelers take Ritter. So I think Ritter would go. I think okay, fit wise, I would love Ritter to the Steelers. I would love. And I think Colts. I think maybe Howell to the Colts. Pick it to or, the Colts or as the well Titans, at 42. Or the Titans. I think Seahawks have two straight – Seahawks have back-to-back picks at 40 and 41. you got to figure a quarterback goes there. Yeah, yeah. So Unless they trade for Baker. Unless they trade for Baker, then I think they they pass on it. Yeah, but then the Panthers could also trade for Baker, and then that's when they go cross, and right. then it goes – I mean, yeah, well, the draft eight. is what ten days away, so very, that's, very soon. that's so soon. Yeah, man. Yeah, Jack's been focused too much on baseball. We gotta, <laughs> Dude, we, we gotta like get him back in the football. Fifty league. games to go before we get to think about yeah. a draft. Did you, Actually, did you, uh, did you give, did you figure out that Jets receiver you were talking about? Yes, Keelan Cole. Keelan Cole. Right. I mean, there they we were go. throwing him deep balls like crazy. He cannot. They were. Hold on. Hey, he came down with some of them. He, he came Don't down with some, him. including one that was out of the back of the end zone that would have been the catch of the year. But I mean, they, yeah, they the were one-handed throwing, one. Yep. They were throwing those deep balls to Braxton Berrios and Keelan Cole, and I like Braxton Berrios a lot, but he's not Drake London down the field. Right. Right. Yep. Agreed. Well, yeah, I guess I have to round it out usually because I guess now I'm the host. But uh, thank you guys so much for watching. This was a really fun mock draft. And again, if you guys want Jack on the episodes more, we will definitely try and get him and convince him. <laughs> but check out now the that I don't have to podcast. edit the episodes every week. I, I, I'll, for, I'll for sure come on and talk for an hour and then not have to do that post <laughs> stuff. It's way easier. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. We've been the Cold Hard Truth NFL podcast and we will see you next time.